with beer. Hey, podcast kittens, it's Kathy Ketta. Bye, Lady Bear, coming at you with yet another tongue tickling installment of a cat, cat with, with beer. We have a tremendous guest in the studio Ooh. today, ladies and or gentlemen, oh, yes. another friend's guest. Introduce yourself. Hello everyone, I am Kyle Codd, an actor from Canada in Tokyo for 10 years now. Yes, Woo! Kyle Codd on the so podcast, boring. welcome to the welcome. Kyle Codd cast, Great ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if I can match this energy. Kyle, Kyle. Codd is in the building. <laughs> Kyle, Codd, we have yeah. played the Kyle Codd. Yeah, and he came with a Kyle Codd. His business card is also a Kyle Codd that looks like a Trump card. It was so cool. It is the literally. Trump card, the Kyle Codd Trump card. It's literally it's the card. Smart. It's all in the card. Kyle cards. played the card. It's remarkable. Kyle, please let our listeners know who you are and what you do. Who am I and what do you do? I am Kyle Codd, as I stated before. I've lived here in Japan for at least 12 years Mm -hmm. as an actor and television personality, Mm -hmm. mainly on NHK World, Mm -hmm. as you may know. Mm -hmm. NHK World fam. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I also dabble in commercials, uh, musical theater, and I'm an all-around nice guy. I enjoy walks in the park, uh, working out in my room, and uh, drinking alcohol. Well, that ca- well, hang on just a minute now. That was <laughs> that was unexpected. <laughs> Kyle Card just got a curveball there. You have exceptional hair, Kyle Card. Look how nice Thank his you. hair is. It's remarkable. My hair. I, I practice Incredible. every day with the curler and. So Kyle and yes. Lady Beard hey! have already met. Oh, uh, mate, That Kyle, is correct. Tell us the Kyle's, story, please. Kyle's, I met Kyle on like second week in Japan. We've been friends for 10 years. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was my, when I first got to Japan, as much as I was lady bearding, I also signed up for all the acting agencies and whatnot, because you need all the help you can get. Mm. And so my first ever audition was uh, some audition for some like soccer playing commercial. It was for a soccer playing I commercial. I met Kyle! Hey. We played some soccer? We played some soccer. <laughs> okay. hilarious. So we show up at this audition. Um, <laughs> I am not a soccer player. Nor I. Mm. I did not yeah, dress as a soccer player. Beard was not dressed as a soccer player. As no. you can see, his hair was down to here. <laughs> uh-huh. He had... You know, it's t-shirt, t-shirt, shorts, just normal sneakers, same as myself. I brought some shorts to put on, but whatever. Some wow. normal running shoes for actual running. And um, we looked like a ragtag crew. Oh, Me and Beard got put into the same audition group with this other, like, uh, Russian guy named yep. Andre. What's his name? Andre. Andre. And we Shout all looked apart. Shout out to Andre. Hey, Andre. Hi, how Andre, you doing, man? <laughs> Nastorovia. And we all looked... Terrible, mm, actually. Um, the rest of the blokes at this audition were they're full on. We had people from Spain, like professional soccer players. Oh they had cleats, the knee high socks, you know, the the club jerseys. Mm-hmm. They're like they're bouncing the balls on their toes, and the clients are like already. Oh, we haven't even started the audition yet. No, no. <laughs> and we thought maybe it's going to be the usual. You stand there, you turn around, you know, do the thing, introduce yourself. Wasn't the thing. case. They made teams. Oh. And wouldn't you know it? They put me, Beard, and Andre <laughs> on the same <laughs> team. Mm-hmm. Yep. We yeah. had the greatest team name in history. We were team Hell Yeah! <laughs> Except that wasn't the real name. We can't say it on the radio. It was, a, we had, it was a name that was similar to Hell Yeah, but more explicit. A mm-hmm. little, little more explicit. Yeah. All right. Yeah. There might be children listening, so it was exactly. Team uh, Hell Yeah. Yeah, Team, team Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Team Oh Yeah. Oh Yeah. yeah. And Oh Yeah, we were terrible. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. So let me guess you didn't get the audition? Well, it played out. We actually had to play a mini soccer uh, match against soccer. these soccer. professional they soccer players. From like the Ugandan national soccer team. Literally. Why there. did they audition with you? Well, why? That's a great question. Why did they audition? Well, with some of the are these agencies, they they kind of have a quota. They gotta get people to auditions. <laughs> and I felt like part of the quota that day. I had no business being there. I've never written at any point on my acting resume that yes, I've played soccer. Mm. No, they phone me. He's like, you ever played soccer before? It's like maybe once or twice. You're in! I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay. So we're playing on this actual soccer pitch. And like I said, these people are in these from soccer clubs. They're bouncing the ball, they're shooting it over our head. But what we lacked in skill, we made up in enthusiasm. We certainly did. We certainly did. After all, we were Sorry. actors. We weren't here to win a soccer competition. We were no. here to get cast in this ridiculous commercial, which we didn't really understand what it even was. No. So my strategy was like, anytime I was near the ball, just <laughs> slide tackle. Like, it didn't matter if it didn't make sense. Slide just slide tackle. tackle. That's all I did. <laughs> so I remember I'm doing this over and over again. The ball would be meters away, and I was going, ah, closest I'll get. Slide tackle. <laughs> because I know that it's a commercial. We'd actually have to play the game. So I remember... There's one of these African dudes 
amazing soccer player. He's dribbling towards me, and I'm like, here we go, Ladybeard. Slide tackle. Don't get anywhere near the ball. And as he dribbles <laughs> past me, he goes, hey, why do you keep doing that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the bird. Oh, so funny. Like, he, oh, I don't know if you understand. He was literally meters away from the ball. He'd slide. <laughs> here be the guy. It's beard just like, <laughs> he was like, what are you doing? <laughs> well, like, he gets an A for effort, at least. Yeah. You know, at least you were putting yourself it's into the game. Even though you were very far away from the ball. 100% of my soccer acting mm. involves four Falling on the floor. Mm. I could also do the old sell the shit. Ah! <laughs> Yeah, he's did that once or twice. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think Andre might have fell over and tried to sell that. But also, so, we so, got so, slaughtered. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> you met there, you did the audition. I have the feeling you didn't quite get the job. No. no I didn't get the job. Did no. you get the job? No. I think I Andre got a callback, I think, but that was what? the closest we got. Yeah, because yeah. Um, when Andre scored, like, we actually scored. As mm. bad as we once, were, we remarkable. scored on this. It was remarkable, uh. and we had the best celebration. Andre was doing backflips. Backflips and that. Beard was doing slides. <laughs> I was just running around screaming because I'm insane. Were you shirtless and, at one point? I got a feeling you were at one point you were shirtless. I might have taken my shorts yeah, off. Yeah. Of. Yeah. Wow, okay, you were, a, you were in that. This but audition enough. story's taking 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. We've gotten hot. into Kyle Khan's career on any level yet. That's what I was thinking, so let's roll it a little All bit right. back. Can, can I just add one you? more thing? Yes, At the please. audition, as wonderful as it was, what Beard did to celebrate, we sat on a bridge and he opened up a can of chickpeas. <laughs> <laughs> he <laughs> ate a can of chickpeas <laughs> on a bridge in Tokyo telling me how terrible it tasted and he was vegan at the time. <laughs> I was, that's he was right. vegan. When I got here, I was vegan. I yeah, never yeah. heard that story. Yeah, I was another, vegan another time. podcast yeah. episode. Mm. It's like, of course it tastes terrible. <laughs> it's a can of chickpeas. I used to have to, when I first got here, I'd walk around with like a backpack full of 20 cans of chickpeas in my back every day. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's dedication. Yeah, it was Oof. the only way. It's so, quite oh, wait, wait, I, would, I would like to round that up saying you might not have gotten the job, but it looks like you got a very long friendship. We got a wonderful friendship. A wonderful mm -hmm. friendship. Oh. Me and Kyle Card all day. All right. Yeah. All day, every day. For 10 years, my friend. So, my friend. apart from this Remarkable. wonderful oh. soccer right. experience, uh, <laughs> what? tell us about the three events that have made you who you are today. Wow, that just came out of left field. We're talking about you know soccer games and cans of chickpeas. We like to mix it up on this podcast, Kyle yeah, Card. Gonna... Here on the Kyle Card cast. Oh, we keep you on your toes. I wish so I got a memo. Your story starts in Canada. So how yes. does it bring you to Japan? Well, I'll, oh, good point. Now you've jogged my memory. The first introduction to Japan. I was six years old. I like to draw pictures. I like monsters and these types of things. I used to draw these things in church with my mother, believe it or not. Um, so I like monsters, like monster movies, anything, anything evil and with teeth and ah, I just loved it. And I was in my room one day playing with my toys, you know, as children do. My mom just yells at me, Carl, get in here. I'm like, what? I'm playing with the get in here right now. I'm like, okay. So I go in there and I come around the corner. Are you familiar with the movie Akira? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, it's yeah. a classic movie, yeah. staple yeah. for everyone who yeah. kind of knows Japanese movies. It was my movies. first ever anime experience of any kind. Oh, and right. they yeah. predicted the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Anyways, oh. I walked around into the living room right at the moment where they're going, where the guy's like morphing. He's like, yeah. and I'm like, what's going on? What is this? And he looks at me. She says, Japanese animation. <laughs> and I'm like, Bleh. And that's why I started liking Japan. Hey, this is your oh, mother. Wow. This is my mother. At age six, she exposed you to six, Akira. Six. She oh. let you watch Akira when you were six. Yes. Okay. Not only watched him, demanded he enter she the room. He demanded. She yelled at me. I was like, Mom, she just, get in here. Like, okay, okay. And I ran in there, and my mind was blown. And ever since then, I just looked for any Japanese animation that was available. At the time, it was a long time ago, there wasn't anything available. Some really violent niche stuff was there. Mm. And of course, I'd watch yeah, all of yeah, that. Right, yeah. All of it. Right. Whenever it come on, it'd be uh. like 12 o'clock, my mom would call me, get up, call this animation on. So I was very connected with Japanese animation Your that mom time. sounds like a badass. I'm, yeah, I'm surprised cool. that she was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it's anime, let's watch anime together. Yeah, oh. that's how it started with my little niche with that anime. And then I'll mm -hmm. continue on into high school. There was actually some Japanese uh, exchange students. Mm that I'd uh, gotten pretty close with, and they were teaching me like, little Japanese characters and that sort of thing. So I got interested in learning the language. And then when I got into university, I got into a Japanese exchange program into Tokyo, into oh. Machida, and I was here for a year. And I suppose I always wanted to be an actor, but never had a chance to do it. But in Tokyo, I was uh, introduced to an agency, which got me on like a commercial for Disney C for the Tower oh. of Terror. Oh, oh great, the yeah. Tower I was of Terror. An, yeah, I was an extra doorman. It was a great thing. We were filmed all night. It was ridiculous, but that was my first commercial experience. Your first gig. Yeah. Wow. Well, my first gig, what was it? It was a, it was a Saigon reenactment drama. Mm -hmm. 
I told everyone I knew in Japan I was going to be on television. And of course, it was the back of my head for five seconds. Oh, it was、no. a two hour program.、Oh, <laughs> Everyone's、no. waiting. When, when are you going to be on TV? I'm going to be on TV. Wait, it was a really important scene. And it was five seconds. I was、oh. so stoked. And everyone's like, no, it's only five seconds. What the hell? Yeah, that's how my career started here. Wow.、Well. Yeah. Well, it's a great way to start. It's a great way. So、yeah. your acting didn't start in Canada; it started in Japan. Yes.、Yeah. But were you? Were you? Did you go through like drama school or something in Canada? I、or? did not. I did not.、Right. I always kind of played the character in school. I always liked doing accents. I was very interested in languages and like changing personas and these types of things. So I always wanted to get into it. But all、yeah. right. So you studied Japanese not with the aim of coming to Japan to be an actor. You just studied、no. Japanese because you liked Japanese. Yes. All right. Yeah,、okay. and like the animations as well. So I, guess, I assume you were watching anime, hoping that you're learning Japanese, you'd be able to understand it without subtitles. Well, I originally was really into it, the art style, because originally I, I like to draw, like I said, and I was really interested in improving my art style. I really love the art style, so I was like, okay, I want to be an animator. I want to make video games, and like,、mm. is something I had in my head. I'm going to do this one day. I'm going to make video games, and like, of course, I kind of I took art school in university, and the first year the teacher was very. Very mean towards my my products. What? <laughs> she's like, you're terrible. This line quality is trash. So I kind of stepped away from drawing for a while, and I got more interested in acting again. I started doing a little bit of background work in Canada, but wasn't what you call acting. But the interesting thing, all these things came around. Well, doing my career here in Japan, I actually started making video games, but in a different way、oh, wow. through video game motion capture. Oh yes. So it all came、oh. back. Something I put out in the universe. I'm gonna be in video games in some capacity, and then it came back. I like realized one day, I was like, "Wow, I'm making video games in Japan." Tell us what、yeah. games you've、Are、been you, in. Are you allowed to tell? Oh, I can tell you the ones I've been. I was、uh, just played the body movements for Sebastian Castellanos, the main character of The Evil Within. Otherwise, this, Psycho Break. I've been in Death Stranding. Oh, what?、Mm-hmm. Nice. Mm-hmm. I'm the first character who gets killed by the BT ghosts on camera. You know, I get、oh. crushed by a truck. Oh, and I get screaming.、Like, ah, yeah, I think、me. I've seen you then. Yeah, yeah. yeah.、Mm-hmm. That's Kyle Carter. I'm, I'm that guy. I'm that、okay. guy. You all played Kyle Carter at home. You didn't even realize. That's right. And then some other games I can't talk about. Boy,、Ooh. really? Yeah. There's a couple I can't talk about yet. Wow. Okay. Okay. Stay、cool. tuned. Sounds good. Well, <laughs> God, oh my lord. Did you actually act in Canada then, or did you then just straight come over? So we we know from your up until now, you came here as an exchange, and、yes. it got you into media. Did you then after your exchange go back home, or did you decide to stay? Well, on the exchange, it was for a year, and during that exchange period,、um, I actually went to an agency,、mm-hmm. and I had my first little dabblings in the entertainment industry here. And when I went home, that was really sparked it for me. I just started to try to get into it back home in Canada, hence like the background work and things like that. And then I was continuing to study Japanese, and I got to the point where, you know what, I've got the Japanese. I don't want to lose it, but also my true calling, I want to be an actor.、Mm-hmm. And I thought to myself, well, I'm not going to get any better being at Japanese in Canada, so I'm like, I'm going to go to Japan, and I'm going to be an actor. Okay, great. So that's how I ended up here. Two birds, one stone, as they say.、Mm. That was the approach. But it、so. is an interesting approach. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm just. Can you like let us know what your first start into it was? What was your first? Because a lot of our listeners, obviously, they're interested in coming to Japan, finding out how people make it in Japan. So, what was your first entry into Japan when you I, came? I also, being the Caucasian man that you are, off to Japan we go to be an actor is an unconventional choice.、Mm. So,、Indeed. explain yourself. Explain myself. Well, I didn't really put a lot of thought into it. I thought it would be a lot <laughs> easier. Than it that it was.、Really? Okay. I thought, well, if you could be an actor in Canada or America, you can do that in Japan. It's no problem. They have Japanese dudes on TV in Canada. Exactly.、Right. You know, must be the other way around. Japan、right? is fun. I grew up watching some of these crazy Japanese shows、yeah. that I would rent at the Japanese convenience store that they had in Canada. You know, these types of things. Like, oh, anyone could be on Japanese television. It's no problem. So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go do it. So I. Get there. Well, the first step is coming to Japan, of course. That's、It's, the hardest part,、yeah. though, isn't it? That's that what I'm、ticket. curious、mm-hmm. about. Like, yeah, how, what、ticket. was your instead of just a plane ticket? Were you just going? Well, that、ticket? was um what really pushed me was the exchange program. So to come here for a year and study Japanese、mm. was the first step into Japan.、Mm. Yeah, so that got me a plane ticket. That got me a reason to be here,、mm. and got me the whole introduction into the culture. And then the second time was a working holiday visa because、no. Canada. Working holiday. 
wonderful visa. Best visa ever. That's the point I was like listening out for. I'm like, how did you first come here? Working holiday. Best Now I'm sorry for you, American listeners. You cannot take advantage of that visa. But a lot of other countries, and if you are, you might want to check. If you're not from America, you might want to check if your country is part of the Working Holiday Association, which means you can go to Japan for one year. I think until the age of 30, they might have changed it since. Yeah. The, Colorful, the Rona, but um, so that would give you an opportunity to work or travel or study or do whatever you want to do in Japan mm-hmm. for an entire year. Oh, it's like working super holidays amazing for the sake opportunity. you can have a holiday and work. It's yeah, really the you idea, can do literally it? whatever you want. You don't even have to work. In no, theory. you don't have to work. You can well, do whatever well, you want well, for an entire well, you year. You kind of have to work because it's not so simple. You can apply for the visa. You got to write this whole itinerary what you oh, what yeah, you're, you what you're going to do, mm-hmm. where yep. you're going Little, to work, and yeah. But did you actually do any of the things you wrote on your itinerary? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> good question there. Beard, things change. All right, listen, I, just, hey, I go with hey. the flow. A man grows. Yeah, exactly. look, listen, hey, man grows. <laughs> God, so you... we're not going to lock ourselves into some a man goes in a river. plan <laughs> written on a piece of paper. When your mother beckons, come here from the other room to show you a, a, a Japanese animation man turning into a tentacle. If a hero calls, you follow. Listen, yes. So you wrote a very long story, might not have done any of that. You touch down in Japan, you have an entire year to make your Hmm. career happen. What do you do? You join an agency. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you find a uh, talent agency. If we're still talking about getting a start in entertainment mm-hmm. in Japan, mm-hmm. agencies are key. You don't want to be going around doing things freelance. A, you don't have connections, and B, if you don't speak the language, you're screwed. And C, a lot of places don't want to work with someone who's independent. Mm-hmm. So yes, so that's one of the biggest keys. And thankfully that's... for me, I had a connection before I came in. I got a. I started. Well, your contacted, homies was in a. Yeah, I contacted an agency before I came. Which is something I talk about on my YouTube channel. Oh, um, oh there is. <laughs> shameless plug. The Kyle Card Call. Yeah, Bakaido Japan. Yeah, <clears throat> check me out. Like and subscribe. And um, so I had already entered the agency, and be- he knew the dates when I was coming. So he already had put me into some auditions and stuff, and actually booked a commercial before I got on the plane. So you got to wow. plan ahead. Oh, that's a good Create agency. opportunities. Star. Kyle Card. Yeah, that's yeah, remarkable. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, the Japanese don't like dealing with you directly if you're a freelancer. Freelancers, yeah. It's seen a bit like you're not trustworthy. In a way, your kind of agency (laughs) vouches for you and they make you seem credible because you're signed with them and they're kind of like responsible for you to a certain extent. So if you're freelance, it makes you look kind of dodgy, untrustworthy. If something happens, they have no one else to blame. Yeah, Yeah, Japan, generally speaking, doesn't like just individuals floating around by themselves, don't they? You well, must be under the care of an institution of some kind. Well, I mean, mostly for liability. you even want to just get, you know? like, a house in Japan yeah, or, like, yeah, an apartment, right. you need someone to Guarantor. vouch for Guarantor. you. There's always, like, there needs to be someone else. So I think that explains probably why. Yeah, they like a cushion, yeah. you know, like a cushion. Yeah. You know, if it's, like, straight, they can't really go right at you, but there's a cushion, they can, like, kind of delegate things. They seem to like that. So, so having an agent us. is important. Okay. So you are in Japan, you, you have your agency, you signed up, you started doing jobs. What happens for the rest of your work and holiday year? Well, I uh, actually, well, I'll tell you a funny story. Ooh. So I arrive in Japan, I film this commercial, I book another commercial, which I film, and I'm like, oh, I'm on top of the world, I booked two commercials, I might have done another one of those reenactment dramas. I felt, oh, this is great, off, off to a running start, great. March 11th. <gasps> oh. oh. What year, Kyle? Uh, 2011, yes. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That's the year I came to Japan. The big, big yeah. disaster, earthquake, and tsunami year. So, yeah. So basically, all those commercials never aired. <laughs> oh, dear me. And there was no jobs to be had. There's no auditions to be had. There's nothing on TV. There's no media, as you know. The AC commercials, constantly the the public service ticket announcements, like everything was kind of shut down. There, they weren't filming anything. Oh. But during that period, an opportunity did present itself. There was a um, a live television show, like a news kind of like. Uh, entertainment live show called Goji ni Muchu. Oh. And um, one of their uh, commentators, they have these foreign correspondents that they have each day. One of their foreign correspondents, um, right after the earthquake, he had fled to Okinawa. Oh, wow. Oh. Yes. And so they had an opening. Oh, <laughs> So they held an audition. And I was like, yes. 
Because everyone was like, you're not going to flee back to your country? You know, it's like, of course I'm not going to flee back to my country. I'm not going to leave everyone in Japan hanging. You know, I come here and I guess, oh, oh, things aren't looking too swell. I should probably flee back to my country and leave the Japanese hanging. I wasn't of that mind. I came here. I was going to see it through. So like, okay, I'll take that audition. And I took the audition and I got the job. And I was on this television show for two years after that. Wow. Could you explain to people who don't know the show what kind of program it was? It is a kind of an (laughs) off-color Live television show. Um, very. Uh, it has every day. It has different like famous commentators or columnists or doctors or just various television personalities. And they had one foreign correspondent at the time uh, called the Kurofune Tokuhain. And how would you translate black boat? Correspondent, you know, because black you know, boat, yeah, you because know, Perry came like, out yeah, on the black boat. It's from Perry with the black ships, with the black smoke oh. bellowing out of the coal engines. Yeah, oh. so Kurofune Tokuhain. I was on Monday with the Matsuko Deluxe. Oh, oh right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was Matsuko on that show. is quite famous. Very yeah. famous yep. celebrity drag queen. Yeah, mm. yeah, yep. yeah. Famous columnist, just very, very smart. I just wish my Japanese was better then because she, her Japanese is just, oh, she's always on top of it. So smart. I could have just mm-hmm. like absorbed so much of her like. Just how she talks and how she just the, the catch ball, just amazing, just truly fascinating to watch her talk. Um, so yeah, and that's the type of show is they go through the top kind of like eight stories that they have their um, their editors and producers in the back going through, and they're usually very off color and and comedic. And mm-hmm. then of course the commentators they're usually um, they're very knowledgeable in a certain context. Like we had uh, Wakabai's son, she was a um, a like a, a day trader or just not not just day trader but she was like into the stock market heavily she'd written books about it so anything about the market thing like that she would talk about of course anything erotic or sexual Matsuko would talk about it mm-hmm. but she's also very knowledgeable about a lot of cultural things as well and so my corner I would do the weather at the end of the day and I was of course terrible at Japanese at the time so I'd be stuttering over my words they called me kami kami kairu <laughs> <laughs> kami kami means to stutter like kami kairu and um, I also did a uh, corner called Oh, Mama Taiko Utagasen, which is like, how would you? <laughs> what Utagasen is like a like a song contest. It's a song contest, and Oh Mama refers to. Uh, are you familiar with snacks, like snack bars? Oh, yeah. oh like snack san yeah. where yeah. like an old lady usually just has like a little bar, and the lo- the, re- the regulars pretty much just come and have like drinks and a couple of snacks. Yeah. So in these snack bars, these uh, Mama Sons, they generally have led very colored lives. Mm-hmm. So I would go and interview these. Ladies of a, a colored oh, background. Oh, that sounds amazing. Yes. There must be some crazy you stories. Must have some stories there. Yeah. Ridiculous stories. Mm-hmm. And then at the end of that, they would sing a karaoke song. Mm. And then back in the studio, they would rank them in the top 10. And at the end of the year, um, they would have at, on New Year's, they'd have like a, a sing off. Like all of them would come into the studio on New Year's and they'd sing and then they'd crown the the champion. Miss Mama. Miss oh, Mama. the like, wow. your mama bar owner ladies <laughs> wow. songs. Fantastic. The yeah. Mama of Mamas. That sounds a lot oh of good. fun. That sounds great. It was great fun. We're doing Japanese comedic TV. So mm-hmm. it's been my experience that you're going on TV and you're going to do some ridiculous nonsense on mm-hmm. TV. So when the camera rolls, that's when that begins. But until the moment the camera rolls, everyone's still very, Hi, Yoshikono Kajimasu. Tone Kaioru-san. Which is not. Well, yeah. So now, has this been your experience as well? Because my experience was you're, you're on camera. Like, we, when we arrived today, we were very casual with each other. Yeah. Just, you know, so now we get on camera and we're just like, ah, nah, 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 nah. it's a nice time, right? Mm. But in Japan, you arrive, you have to go through a hundred more stuff. And then you'll be doing this on camera. And the three of you on camera are going, ha, 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 ha. And behind the camera, there's all these Japanese dudes in suits. <laughs> with serious faces. Stone faced staring at you. So every time you catch a glimpse mm. of one of them, you feel like you're doing something wrong at all oh my times. Gosh, very serious behind the camera. Had you did do you share this experience? How'd you go doing Japanese I TV? I absolutely share that experience, but the funny thing about um Goji and Muchu was like they were trying to really push that comedic element, right? So behind the camera, it was actually very funny. And when they'd laugh, like everyone would laugh. You'd hear the producer just off his chair, like he's like, ah! <laughs> all, the, all the staff, all the eighties, all the cameramen are just laughing, and there's always laughter in this in this particular studio. It's just so like warm. It's wow. encouraging yeah. as well, like That's for lovely. someone cracking a joke. If no one laughs, it's kind oh, of a bit of a. So ugh. Sometimes it felt a little forced, mind you. Okay. Like some of your experiences probably been mm. when the camera rolls. <laughs> Cut. 
<laughs> Serious face. Pulls out some whiskey. <laughs> How are we going to get through this? Oh my, oh my, sorry, moto go, oh my. Hi, Mise. Either. I think in Japan there is like this thing and like we have here a switch in the studio in front of us on the table which says on and off and it huh. seems to be in Japan a lot of people they have a very strict switch between being on and uh, off. They also call that the same thing when you go uh, to work. That's when you're on. When you go home mm-hmm. and you get you know into cozy clothes you're off. So women for example say on and off is very can be very different like without makeup they might just be slouching on the couch having a beer but when they go to the office they're like perfect yeah, and right. this pristine perfect picture and then that kind of seems to be reflecting a little bit in the world of media as well. As how, how do you say that in Japanese? The, the on-off concept? It is on-off. Oh, on-off. On-off, yeah. Oh, that's on it. The okay. exact same thing, yeah. So they just call it on and off. So you kind of like, if you're switched on or if you're just like, yeah, this is my off time now. Right. I have, a, I have a concept that I throw in usually. It's similar, but when sometimes they'll look, come at me and say, Kyle-san, when the camera's not rolling, your, your energy's really low. I mean, is everything okay? It's like, I'm just... I'm just sets it in, man. It's like means like I'm low energy, or or, or I'll be like Jude, and I'll, I'll be sitting here. I'll be oh like I'm just recharging. Uh, yeah. Energy saving. <laughs> yeah, energy save mode. Well, that's reasonable. I'll I mean, Hartley by. Jackson was saying something similar as well that he was just like he was just be chilling, but then once he goes on stage, he's like bam, brings yeah. all the energy in. It's been my experience that um, a lot of people in show business are like that. Mm. Because you can't be at a billion all day long. Yeah, you need you to preserve to, it from time to time. And down you are a right. billion all the time. Bless you. Thank <laughs> you. But, yeah, but, that, but then, when I, but then when, the when I do, time. when I hit my wall, I go straight to zero. There's no, there's nothing in between. Uh, there's like, a human there experience. is on and then they're sleeping. That's the only. <laughs> I two feel that's like it. just pedal the metal 100 percent the whole time. <laughs> yeah, man. But pretty much You're done. Pretty much. A friend of mine, when he met my parents, he said afterwards, he was like, I understand you so much better now because your mum is just going, talking endlessly all the time. <laughs> your dad is just like this. <laughs> and you're, you're one or the other of them at all times. You're never anything my in the middle. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, I've never seen you off, Beard. No? Only when you're out. Only huh? when you're out. Like okay, completely well, out of energy. Yeah, well, yeah, that's, yes. Yeah. Uh, go amazing. Go so you are on Gojini Mutu for about two years? Two years. And yeah. then what happens then? Well... During that period, that's two years, right? My working holiday was one year, remember? So that ran oh. out. Ah. But, but, yeah, oh. but two now years, what? which means you're already on a working visa, right? Or, or could you extend yours in Canada? You're not able to extend the working holiday visa. All right. So I actually got um, switched to an entertainer visa. Oh, those ones yeah. are hard to get, Very though, I Very hard heard. to get. So it was, it was pretty easy in this case because my agency still had the contract. Mm. Of course, they want to keep me on the show. The show wants to keep me. He's like, we've got a contract. And, the and it says like, NHK on it. Yeah. So. Well, that one wasn't NHK. Oh, that one wasn't NHK. That was NHK. Uh, MX Television, Channel yes. 9. Channel 9. May as well be NHK, though. MX is pretty (laughs) institutional. pretty known. Uh, known. Oh, they're kind of night and day. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, is that right? I was was incorrect. (laughs) Okay. So, wait, sorry, sorry. Excuse me for that. Um, Okay, we can start that again. We can start that again, okay. All right. (laughs) So, you were on Gozu Nimutsu, and then after two years, what happens? Well, during that period, um, as you recall, my, my working holiday visa was one year. Hmm. And this, I was on there for two years. So what happened? So my working holiday visa ran out. But the the contract I was on with Goji Muchu, they they wanted to keep me on the show. So in this period, the agency that I went through, they offered me an entertainer visa. Okay, so, good. Yes. Those ones I heard are hard to get, but you already had your contract. Yes, it was very much easier to get with actually having a regular television show with mm-hmm. a contract. That's something I'd recommend trying to get. Mm. But very difficult if you're not in the country. So don't expect to get a regular television program oh, no. right away. Unless oh, no. you can. I mean, that would be amazing. Wow. Thank you. Can do that. Yeah, can I get a regular, please? Oh, no problem. I'm okay. heard of. Yes. Wow. So what do you do then? You you had your extra year as an entertainer. Goji Nimutsu ends. What do you do? No, on contrary, it wasn't an extra year. In the beginning, with these entertainer visas, you get three months. Yes, you do. Oh, God. <laughs> I've been on the entertainer visa too. Yeah. Oh, so wow, every three short. months, I was going back to that bloody immigration oh. system. Se- the second you get your visa, you start your application oh. for the next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they yeah, won't even tough. give you an ID at a three months. And then, oh, it was just, it was hair. So uh, gradually, I, I kept working. Even mm. when Goji Nimuchu finished, I kept getting other jobs. I, I Eventually got a job with NHK Educational okay. on a show called AAGO. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. That was a fun program. And they just keep extending it. And thankfully, the immigration laws and stuff, well, not really laws, but people in immigration started understanding that you know people had careers here. And mm-hmm. I started gradually getting longer visas. Okay. And now I'm on a three-year visa. Woo! 
congratulations! Oh, the card all. Congratulations! Yeah. Superstar. Yes. But wait a second, you were here for almost 10 years now? Yes, over 10 years. So wouldn't you be able to apply for a Juken soon? Yes, I will be able to apply. However, again... Ejuken is a permanent residency, oh. sorry. Just to just to point out that I'm not an expert on Japanese visas. I don't play, you know, you know what are those, paralegal? I don't pay a, play a paralegal <laughs> on the internet. But in my case and in my knowledge, okay, for example, if you want to get a permanent residency visa, you have to be... In your type of visa, you need to first have the maximum um, extend, possible extendable period on it. Otherwise, so for example, most humanities visas, they're like generally three years. The maximum span is five. Mm -hmm. So you need to have that five plus being in Japan a total of 10 years, for example. Oh. Yes. So and they then want to you see that you've already worked your way up to from, from – wait, if it was yours mm -hmm. maybe three months to then – Half a year to then a year to then three years to then five years to yeah. then apply for yeah because it's like yeah. an oh unspoken rule if you if your company or your sponsor hasn't given you the maximum amount of time on the visa maybe they're not thinking about keeping you around but if you've got oh. like humanities oh five years yeah this is the guy or in the case of an entertainer visa three years okay this is the guy so it just goes to show that you know you're a good worker and that type of thing and wow. something they want to keep around maybe Japanese no. immigration system is your biggest enemy oh. in coming to this country it's to do not anything easy, guys especially entertainment visa oh, seems mate. to be very hard both of you i can feel you both cringe like the aura of cringe on both sides is, is very strong the entertainment visa it's, having to go to immigration is a very painful and long process it, but having to do that every 3 month is like literally like going to the dentist mate. that's probably the best explanation just I love the taste of that fluoride goop. Yeah. Am I the only one? You like the All scrapey right. scrape, no. stab your no, gum? Now I lost my, my explanation. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Go tell ahead. us about your happy right. days with Sunshine Ikezaki. Oh, we're going to talk about Sunshine Let's Ikezaki. Let's do it. Okay. okay. Does everyone know who Sunshine Ikezaki is? Not. Explain, please. Sunshine Ikezaki is this crazy, uh, the, the, I guess the phrase you could say in Japanese, they say, high tension. He's like super energetic and loud screaming comedian. And one of his biggest tropes is he does his self-introduction. And yeah, he just, it's so super long and it just never ends and never ends and it's ridiculous and he's screaming the entire time. I, that, that sounds terribly familiar. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't, screaming all the time, uh, high energy. High energy. I, I feel like I know someone like that. You don't think? Uh, you might have met. Yeah, someone maybe. Like that. Yeah. 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 Shiori. <laughs> Shiori. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So can you? Uh, so you have an English version of Sunshine Ikezaki's joke. So basically, I was contacted one day, and because Mister Mister Sunshine was looking for someone to uh, do a to be a simultaneous translator for his um, oh. his his gagu for his his, his uh, what do you want jokes. to call them jokes jokes yeah. yes quips his jokes quips, punch lines, jokes his punch lines. Mm. oh we wait well comedy is very hard to translate so it is very is hard to translate especially Japanese comedy oh. yeah so I decided to, you know, try this, try out this opportunity. It sounded at first I was like a little adverse. I was like, I don't know how this is gonna turn out. And I thought, you know, you know what, screw it, let's try it out. And um, we had a little um talk on on the Zoom and uh we seemed to mesh off and um he's like, Yeah, by all means. And they called me in and we did it and it's been quite popular. Congratulations. Yes. Can you bust so, out your translation of his introduction for us right now? Are you allowed to do that from a copyright standpoint in that? Are you, is that are you allowed to? Okay. I actually don't know. What 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 do you say is like I guess I'll give you the, the first, first. It's super long, so I'm just going to do like... By the way, the man's first. wearing little short shorts with a, mm. like a tight white wife beater and a headband, yeah? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, he's wearing, yeah, little wife beater, blue shorts, tight, tight shorts, and a headband. And I actually come out wearing the exact same outfit. Oh! Yeah. All yeah. right! Yeah. We you go. got me interested now. Usually you think of a translator in a suit and all, you know, customer. so I come out like normal. You know, I'm just like, I'll come out and I'll be very, you know, very full. I'll do a bow. And then he'll do his... Uh, I can't do it in Japanese right now, but just imagine he's just done something in Japanese, super high energy. I'm saying it's like, I am the unprecedented, transcendentally powerful solo comedian! And I'll take it like that. Yeah. <laughs> Did I blow the mic on that? Is that okay? Did I do it okay. I think you blew my ear. This ear is already a little. Yeah. <laughs> no, so double warm up. You had no ears <laughs> left by the end of this at all. Yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. And then that went um, uh, pretty viral on the internet. Yeah, huh? we have about two million views on the Good. first video. Carl wow. Carl's a famous <laughs> man. And I, by the time this broadcasts, we're going to be on uh, Fuji Television. Oh, yeah. oh, Fuji TV. Sweet. We got a full two minute spot on a very popular comedic program Sweet. Sunday night. Uh, oh, it'll be, goodness. it'll be on. 
I don't know when you at home are going to see this, but it will be broadcast on July 30th on Fuji Television. Yes. It's remarkable. Right. Congratulations, man. That's wow. massive. Um, let's hear more about that in episode two, because we're out of time. For out of time. Well, let's go. Okay. There is more in episode two. Yes. And there will be some treats in episode two, which I'm yes. very excited it's about. Yes. Well. It's been a treat being on this oh, podcast. Oh, it's been a oh, treat. Thank you, Mr. Oh, Cole. Thank you for coming. Oh, thank you. Oh, Mr. Mr. Card, Mr. Card, he kissed me. <laughs> yep, he, he just kissed his hand. And I saw it; it was right in front of my face. Tell the human beings where to find you on the internet. <laughs> yeah, plug yourself, Kyle. Kyle, so I know this was like a very. Should I very, help a little bit here? Very private that person. That was a very private moment here just now. We're living intimate in Japan. Intimate is the adjective I'd like to use. It was intimate. Touch. Well, you can find Kyle Card at at Bakairu on Instagram. You can find Kyle Card at Bakairu Japan on the YouTube's. You can find Kyle Card at Bakairu at on on TikTok. That's right. I do some Japanese content on TikTok recently. It's new, but. I'm trying to catch those Japanese fans. Uh-huh. And just spell that bakairu for us. It is B-A-K-I-R-U for you Japanese-speaking folk. It's basically like writing bakairu in romaji. Ah. So. The translated means there's an idiot. Right? In the next episode, I will tell you. That is correct. Oh, in the next episode, I'll oh, tell saw... you the story of bakairu. There's okay. a story there. Do That's it. good. Kathy Cat, where are you at on the internet? Kathy Cat underscore TV on the Instagram, on the Twitch, on the Twitter. On all those fancy shenanigansies and Lady Beard. NHK Japan Railway Journal. Yes, I also am on NHK Japan Railway Journal. We represent or present all the NHK greatest things family. of the Japanese railway in Japan to you. And Lady Beard. Can we plug your television shows. At my beard underscore Japan and my pop group Baby Beard at Baby Beard underscore Japan. Yoroshiku wanna go, she must. Thank you, dear friends, for paying attention. We'll see you next time for another amazing installment with Kyle Card on. Can- Cat with me! I'll be